Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a primary school teacher here in Dubai. In this video, I'm going to be going over a range of different types of questions that you will receive during a teacher interview. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I cannot guarantee every single question that you're going to receive during your interview. However, due to my own experience and having discussed this with colleagues, I am able to combine some of the ideas and questions that I have had during my interviews to start to think about a range of different categories that you will likely receive. All of those different things are located inside this guide that I've recently created and published on my website, teachtroubletriumph.com. I'm gonna be going over some of the questions that you might see within the guide. However, there are more questions detailed within the guide that I guarantee you'll find beneficial. So feel free to check it out. I'm not going to give example answers to the question strands I'm about to tell you about because I don't want you to take those answers and skew what might be a perfectly custom answer for you. So I don't want it to be biased based on what I've said. So I want you to take this away, perhaps film yourself in a mock interview situation and see, like I do, hmm, what will I change here? How could I have said that differently? And then you can review your answers from there. So to start off with, we come up with the most obvious questions of all, and that is the general types of questions. Now here, it's gonna be questions just about you and trying to get to know you as a person. So it might be just a simple, tell me about you, tell me your strengths, tell me your weaknesses. These can be quite challenging to answer if you're not quite sure of your own weaknesses. Making sure you have your own understanding of what your strengths and weaknesses are before an interview is going to be beneficial, not only for teaching, which we'll get into in a second, but also being able to answer those types of questions. Within this section, you might also receive questions related to goals. So things like, where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? What are your specific goals? Not just for teaching, but also just for life. For me, for example, I said I wasn't gonna give example answers, but for me, it would be helping people, and this is what this YouTube channel's about. If you find it useful, by the way, feel free to subscribe. I do make really, hopefully, useful content that I try to help teachers with, so yeah, feel free to check that out. The next question trends are those teaching-related general questions. For me, personally, these are the most challenging questions I find to answer, because it's those ones where it can be really general and there's a range of different answers that you can give to these questions. It could be something along the lines of, what is your teaching philosophy? Now that would go back to my six story secret. One of the secrets within that video was having a, a pedagogical story, that's a big word to say, and making sure that you have that, and I could link that back to that story. But having those general stories can be really beneficial in this specific question type here, because then you can link back to those. Within that category, you're also gonna be looking at specific lessons. So they might say, what's a, a feature of an outstanding lesson? What's the typical lesson look like in your classroom? What would teachers say if I walked into the staff room and they were, they were talking about you? It's those questions where it's very general, very broad, but again, knowing your own strengths and weaknesses as a teacher, as well as an individual, can then back you up with those types of questions too. I'm also going to share a really interesting question strand at the end of this video, so make sure you're staying tuned for that one. Assessment questions are the next types of questions that you're likely to receive during an interview. These are really important because the schools want to know how you use assessments to make judgments and adapt your lessons to suit the needs of the learners. I've given you half an answer already, but you're going to be looking at questions like, how do you adapt lessons to suit the needs of your learners? How do you formatively assess? How do you summatively assess? What is your experience of assessment at other schools? If you're a trainee teacher going for your first teacher job, it might be how have you used different ranges of assessments previously and how did that inform your lessons? It's those different types of questions that basically pick up your ability to see what's going on in the classroom and make decisions from that. These questions might also pick up on gifted and talented children. So although you might see those in inclusion, it gives you a spoiler for another type of question strand, you're also gonna get those questions about gifted and talented children, and that might be really specific if that's their focus as a school. So having that understanding of what the school's goals are is also really important and is part of that research process before you go to that interview. Safeguarding questions. I would be extremely surprised if you did not receive a safeguarding question during your interview. I think it's a really crucial part of the interview as it tests the teacher's understanding of what to do in a range of different scenarios. With that in mind then, the questions that I've had related to safeguarding in the past are specifically to situations. Now, it might be something along the lines of, this has happened, what would you do to address that with a safe safeguarding concern? For me, the, the tip for this one is always to go back to the school's safeguarding policy, and if you have that understanding of what their policy is already, based on what you've seen on their website, 
then you're in a really strong position to be able to answer those questions. An interesting question I've heard have been asked before is what would you do if an adult was in a safeguarding situation? That's a rare one. It's a bit of a wild card. Again, a bit of a clue to a, another type of interview, interview strand that you might receive. But it is, again, quite important to be able to answer those broad range of questions, not just about children, but also about adults too. Working with other adults. As a teacher, it's typical to work with other adults, whether it's TAs or your teacher colleagues. It's also important to be able to answer questions related to how you work with other adults. So it might be if you've got a new TA, how would you approach this? Again, that's something I've spoken about in other videos where I've spoken about a story and given that starred approach to how I would approach that scenario and answer that question. But it also might be, you know, you're having a challenging situation with another colleague, what would you do? And it's those, how do you communicate effectively with other colleagues to make sure that it's a really well-rounded, balanced, positive team? Well-being related questions. This has become a real focal point of schools at the moment. And as a result, they are starting to come through in questions that you might receive in interviews. So it might be, what is your belief with teacher well-being? What is your definition of teacher well-being? That would be a strong question to receive and having that understanding of how to answer those sorts of questions. It might be, how do you improve the well-being of children within your class? Again, I think I've spoken about this one in terms of my six story secret, in terms of my, my own care and having that care story of how I would improve well-being, but also a range of different strategies that I can share in the past. I know I've made a video about my own well-being box and things like that when I was setting up my classroom previously. Maybe I'll link that above there if you wanna go check out a vlog style video from me. And that would be a really beneficial one to mention because then children can share their concerns uh, partially anonymously, but then I can pull them out. So. That one would be there that I could talk about during an interview. These well-being related questions are also similar to safeguarding as well. So it might be if a child comes to you with this concern and asks you to keep it a secret, that can sometimes come through through school in council interviews, what would you do? And again, it's that oh, I can't guarantee secrecy, um, but at the same time, I want to make sure that your well-being is fully addressed. And how would you approach that type of question? Inclusion related questions. Now, this strand relates not only to special educational needs and disability, it also relates to English as an additional language or English language learner, whatever you use within your school. So it might be if you've got this need in the classroom, how would you accommodate it? So it's making sure that you have that understanding of previous practice that you've done to support other children. It might be if you've got a child who struggles with dyslexia, what would you do? It might be how do you create an inclusive classroom? You might also receive questions based on IEPs, individual education plans, and how you can cater to those specific needs. And then when we look at EAL, it might be, well, how do you cater for a child who doesn't speak English? Those are questions that you'll be able to talk about during your interview if you have that experience and also be honest of those strategies that you've used in the past. Behavioral related questions. This is a pretty simple one to answer. It's those practices and strategies that you've used in the past to address behavior. It might be that it's positive reinforcement, proximal praise, coming back to those types of questions. So a couple of questions that you might receive is if this has happened in the classroom, specific behavior difficulty, how would you approach it? that situational based question so that you can talk about that one during an interview. As social emotional learning is also really key in schools at the moment, it might be a question based on that and how do you ensure social emotional learning within your classroom? Okay, so this one, I can almost guarantee this type of question, especially at the moment due to the world that we're living in right now. And it's gonna be innovation related. So all about technology, but not only just technology, specific classroom practice that is extremely innovative. So it might be, Based on what's happening in the world at the moment, how do you ensure inclusive learning? So it's looking at those learning management platforms such as Google Classroom, Seesaw, all those different things to try and create an inclusive classroom. They might want to know about your own personal development. So it might be, how do you ensure professional development for yourself? What are you reading? It might be a type of question that you receive or how do you ensure that you're up to date with technology? And don't be surprised if schools just want to be inquisitive and ask something along the lines of, what is your experience of remote learning? How did it affect you? because then schools might just want to come through, even if you're not the person who receives the job, they sometimes want to just learn from you and see what other schools are doing at the same time. So it gives them that opportunity to learn that. So just be honest in what you've used. I know for me, for example, I'd be talking about Google Classroom and some of the other learning tools that I've used in my hybrid learning. That again is another video that you can feel free to check out after this one. Parental communication and support. Again, this is something really important because 
With parents, it's critical that you ensure the parental discussions and that they're included and supportive within their child's education. So it might be a question like, how do you communicate with parents? Or they might even put an innovation twist on that and say, based on the fact that children's parents can't come into the classroom at the moment, how do you ensure a classroom community using technology? So again, coming back to those learning management platforms such as Seesaw and the way that children can share their own learning on there and then the way that parents get notifications and things like that. The last question strand that I wanted to talk to you about is the wild card. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I cannot guarantee every single question that you are going to get. These questions are, they're difficult and they're difficult for a reason. They want to test your true personality. So it's those questions that you might not be able to prepare for, such as if you were a children's book character, which one would you be? Now, I know if I was to go for this question, I'd probably end up fluffing it and saying like, oh, Shrek or something along those lines and, and shouting a movie character. But I don't know, those are really challenging ones based on your experience and just your personality. It might be a question, like I've heard of a question before where someone said, if I gave you a rock, what would you do with it? How do you answer that? But again, those are those questions where they test your personality and I, I cannot <laughs> preempt and <laughs> help you prepare for those questions. However, the questions I can prepare you with are all located within this guide, as I said at the start of the video. So that is a great place for me to link that one in and share it with you. Feel free to check that out, as I said at the start, at teachtraveltriumph.com. It's all located within there. Hopefully you find this video useful. If you did, feel free to like it. If you're new around here, I create a range of really supportive teacher videos, so feel free to subscribe, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Until then, I'm out.